Who'd ever have thought it had come to this, the workhouse? And I think what we had, I'll tell you summat, it's a good job they separate men and women here. Cos if I get me hands on me wife, I'll throttle her so help me. If you think that's going too far, wait till you hear me story. A few months back, we couldn't have had it better. Henry Martin, landlord of the old leathern bottle on Nottingham Road. That were me. It'll not be there now. Pulled down. Magistrate's orders. It all started last winter. <sighs> it were a coodum, won't it? What it was to remember. Well, one night, through this blizzard, I tell you, you couldn't see further than a couple of feet. And it must have been about two o'clock in the morning. I'm fast on. When all of a sudden, I feel this elbow in my ribs. I thought it was because I was snoring. It wouldn't have been fast time. What's up, I says. I thought I heard some at outside, says Mrs. I says, a blizzard. No, a voice, she says. You're imagining things, woman. Go back to sleep. Then there was a sharp hammering on the door and a voice says, Is anyone there? Now do you believe me, says Mrs. Then it comes again. Is anyone there? Well, there won't no mistake this time. So I crawls out of bed and goes to the window. What is it, I says. What do you want? He whispers some up, but I couldn't catch it. You what? This time I can just make it out. Food and shelter. It's two in morning, I says. If you think I'm opening up in this weather, you've got another thing coming. I'm John Bagley, he shouts. I carry King's Mail. You must let me in. It's the law, Missy says. Don't you tell us what we must do. And slump window shut. Well, I says, maybe I should go down. Sure up and go back to bed, she says. Folks said we were heartless leaving him there to freeze to death. But look at it from my point of view. All right, he said he were carrying King's mail. But how hard to know if he were telling truth or not. He could have been anybody. On door to a complete stranger at two in the morning. <laughs> I'm not that daft. Or if it's a robber and he slits me throat. Next morning after dawn, there's an hell of a racket. Sounds like someone trying to smash the door down. It can't be him, I thinks to me, then. He can't still be there. I looks out at window. It's Daniel Brooks, constable at watch. What's up, I says. He comes in, knocks snow off his boots. It must have been a foot deep outside. And sits his sen down. I've just come from Watermeadows, he says. Found a body. Frost to death. I don't suppose you know out about it. What body, I says. You were carrying King's Mail, says Brooks. Bag full of letters lay outside on him. Never clapped eyes on him, I says. He looks at me, suspicious like. Are you sure? Course I am, I says. What makes you think I have? Because there's only his footprints in snow, and they lead right here. There were no use denying it. In court, I told magistrate it was Mrs. as had refused to let him in, but he didn't believe me. Any road, he said it were me as out licensed, so it were my fault as fell frost to death. Like I said, he pulled it down now. Worse than that, he took me license away and said I'd never get another. It's only trade I know. I'm too old to learn out else. We'd no arm, so we stayed at Mrs. sister's for a bit. We had a bit saved up, but it didn't last long, and we didn't qualify for heart relief. So we had to swallow his pride and beg him to let us in here. There ain't room for another bleakin this year. Believe me, it'll not be any bleaker and rest of my life. <laughs>